Data stores are hard, we get it. They're complex with weird syntax and edge cases. Everything can go wrong with them. That's where Profile Service comes in. This easy to use module handles all of the heavy lifting, allowing you to focus on the rest of your game. In today's tutorial, we're gonna create a powerful and easy to use data store using module scripts and profile service. This video assumes you know how to use modules. If you don't, check out our module scripts tutorial before watching this video. Before you do anything, make sure you own the profile service module. It's linked in the description of the video. Also, go to game settings, security, and make sure you have enable studio access to API services turned on. This enables you to access things like data store from studio rather than only when you're in game. So we can test inside of studio. Once you've done that, go to your toolbox and place the module in server script service. From there, let's create a new module script. We're going to call this player data handler. Inside of the script, let's do local player data handler is equal to a blank table and let's return it, which is how you want to start all of your module scripts. From there, we're going to set up the template for the data to use in your game. We'll do local data template is equal to a new table and then you can set up whatever values you want. I'm going to do cache is equal to zero and we'll make another table called inventory that can store objects. From there, we want to get two services, the first one obviously being profile service, so local profile service equals require game.service script service dot profile service. We also want to get players, which we'll be indexing a few times throughout the script just to make things easier. Next, we need to set up the actual profile store, which you can do local profile store equals profile service dot get profile store with our name player profile and we'll connect it to our data template. From there, we want to create a table called local profiles. This will store all of the profiles for all of the players that join so you can index them from other scripts. This will make more sense later. Now we need to create the function to actually create a data store for the player when they join the game. Let's do local function player added with the player as the parameter. When they join, we want to get a profile by doing local profile equals profile store load profile async and for a key, we're going to use player underscore and the player's user ID. Next up, if a profile already exists, then we want to add their user ID for it. This actually has to be done for legal reasons because there's a chance that your user's data needs to be removed from your game based off their user ID. Then we'll call profile reconcile, which will basically just make sure that all of the data in your template has a value within the player's data. Then we're going to add a listen to release method. This basically means what happens when we delete the profile from the game when the player leaves. We're gonna remove the player's profile from the entire game, and then we're gonna kick the user just in case they didn't fully leave and there was an issue. From there, we wanna check if the player is in the game or not by doing is descendant of players. Then, if they're not, we're gonna release their profile to make sure there's no issues with it. Otherwise, if they are in the game, we're gonna add their profile to the table so that it can be indexed later. Finally, if there's no profile, we're gonna kick the user from the game entirely, meaning there was just some random issue that happened. Now that we have this code, we're gonna create an initialization method for our player data handler to load it for every player. The way we're gonna do that is by creating function player data handler in it. Inside of this method, we need to load the data for the player if they've already joined when this is called and for new players. So we need to do for underscore player in game.players, get players, do, and then we'll spawn a new task so that this happens synchronously. And then we'll do player added with the player argument. We'll also do game.players.player added connect. And inside of this, we'll just write player added, which will call the function with the player automatically as a parameter. We also need to account for the player leaving. What we need to do for that is game.players.player removing connect new function player and what we want to do is if profiles player then we'll just do profiles player lease now that we've done that we actually want to create some methods that other scripts can use to set and update data as well as retrieving it the first thing we're going to do is create a helper local function called get profile this will return the profile of data given a player we're going to use an assert statement. For those of you who don't know, assert statements will check that a condition is, th is true, but throw an error message if it's not, rather than just running different code like an if statement would. So what we're going to do is we're going to assert profiles player 
exists? And if not, we'll use string.format and say profile does not exist for. Now this percent %s basically defines where we want to replace a string. If we do comma player.user ID, it'll replace this percent %s with the user ID. And this will be an error message, so the code will stop running. From there, we can just return profiles player because this means that it does exist. Now let's create our actual getter slash setter methods. The first one we're gonna make is a get method. This will return the data based on the key you give it. So what we'll do is function player data handler get player and key. So you'll provide the player that you wanna get data from and the exact data that you want. The first thing we'll do is say local profile equals get profile player. From there, we'll add an assert statement for profile.data, which basically returns all of the data in a table, which we can index with key. And if that doesn't exist, then we'll say string.format data does not exist for key percent %s, and we'll use our key. Now we know it does exist if the assert statement passes. So we'll just do return profile.data key. And this will successfully return any data that you need. Next, let's create our set method. We'll do function player data handler set player key value. So this will basically just set new data inside of our data store. So we're actually gonna take this top code from our get method to make sure that the data exists for the key. And then we can actually just set the data inside of the profile to whatever our value is. For one extra layer of security, we're gonna do assert type profile.data key is equal to the type of the value. This basically means, let's say we have a name value in our data store. If you're trying to set that name to a table or a number, that shouldn't be possible. So we're adding a layer of type checking that prevents issues like that from coming up. If these pass, we can just do profile.data key will be equal to value. And just like that, we can set data to anything we want and get it. As one more extra method that's really useful, we're going to create an update method. The update method is the most common method you'll find yourself using. What this method basically does is it lets you create any function to change the data. And when you call that function, it's actually automatically given the current value of that data store to work with. And whatever your callback parameter function returns will be set as the new data. So let's do local profile equals get profile player. Then we'll do local old data equals self get player key. This will get the current data. And then our new data will be what happens when we call the callback function with the old data method. Then whatever we get from there will be set using self set player key and new data. So whatever our callback function returns, and we're gonna do an example so you'll understand how this works, will be set as the new data in our table and it will save just like it should in the data store. Now, one thing to remember about module scripts is that the code won't run unless it's called from another script. So what we're going to do is in server script service, we're gonna create another script and we're gonna call it player data service. This script will actually run the code within our player data handler, and we're gonna use it as an example for how to use the other methods. So in order to do that, we have to get the player data handler by doing local player data handler equals require game.server script service, wait for child player data handler. And then all we have to do is player data handler in it. Now to prove that this works, I'm going to go into our player data handler and inside where it says profiles player equals profiles where we're setting the new value. I'm going to add a print statement to print profiles player dot data, which should print this data template that has been cloned to fit the player's profile. Let's test it out. In game, you'll see that a table was printed, which contains both the data, meaning we've successfully loaded all of the user's data. Now that this works, we're going to do a couple of things to show how the get, set, and update methods work. The first one we're going to do is we're going to create a coin that you can pick up to add 300 coins to your inventory. First, take a coin from the toolbox or anywhere. If you have your own, you can use it. Then put a new script inside of it. At the top of the script, say local player data handler equals require game.server script service, wait for child, 
player data handler. Now let's do script.parent.touched, connect, function, hit, and we'll say local player. Then we'll say local player equals game.players, get player from character, hit.parent. If this player exists, then what we'll do is we'll give them 300 gold. And the way to do that is player data handler, update, player, cache, which is the key that we want to change. And then we're going to do function current cache. Now, if we return current cache plus 300, this will take their current amount, which in our initial case is zero, and then add 300 to it. And this will work every single time you hit it. We also want to destroy the coin so that it can't be spammed. And as an extra layer to show you how this works, I'm going to do print player data handler get player cache to show that it adds 300 each time. So I'll join once, get the cache, show you the value, and then join again to show that it saved and added 300 more. Let's do that. So as I walk over to my coin, you'll see that when I hit it, I get 300 cash. Let's do that again. When I hit this coin, it should print 600. As you can see, it prints 600, which means that our data is saving and loading every single time. Let's say instead of adding a value, we wanted to add the coin to the player's inventory. To do that, let's go inside of our update function and let's switch it to inventory and function current inventory. Now this will give us the current table, meaning we can do table.insert, current inventory, coin. And then we do return current inventory, which will have our new value. So if I go down here, my print player data handler, get player inventory, you'll notice it will print out our inventory with the coin inserted to it. So I go here, I hit the first one and the second one, and just like that, we have two coins in our inventory table. The only other method I should show is the set method, which is really straightforward. All we have to do is switch this to player data handler, set player inventory, and let's make it, um, let's just do a sword, a shield, and a bow. And now when I hit the coin, rather than adding a coin or inventory, it should override the entire inventory with that data store. Let's test it out. And as I hit the coin, you can see it overrides my inventory with all of the stuff that we put in and it all saves. As you guys can see, Profile Service makes programming data stores so much easier and honestly kind of enjoyable because of how customized the methods can become. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and check out our other tutorials. We also post daily threads on Twitter, so go give us a follow there to become a better developer. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.